Hi everyone, Michelangelo Badio here. Uh, I would like to say welcome to another version of No Boundaries, the live multi-stream. We're multi-streaming on Facebook and YouTube at the same time now, and we've been doing this for a while. I think we have it down now. Don't you think, Adam? I think it's down to a science. <laughs> Adam gives us uh, gives me the thumbs up. Uh, before we start, I'd like to do uh, some shout outs. Uh, I'd like to say uh, hello to Alexis, uh, to Tanya, to Denny, to Brett, uh, Nick, Roxana, Miss Metal, Sasha, and uh, everybody else that's coming on. Hey, JD, how are you? It's good to see you. Now, I'm looking over a little bit to my right, your left, on the screen here so I can see other people. Uh, that are that are coming online, but uh, yeah, I said hello to you, Brett. Uh, it's great to see you again. It looks like Dean, yes, yeah, Steve, uh, John. Uh, there's just so many people. Roxanne, I said hello to you. I see you online, uh, but uh, there's uh, just a lot of people, and I really appreciate it. Uh, this lesson, I want to talk about something that you know I'm not known as a tapper per se. Uh, just like I'm not known as a seven-string guitar player, but I use seven strings a lot. I have a, a Sawtooth Signature Series seven-string, and I use tapping a lot. And so in this uh, lesson, I'm going to show you some of the shapes that I use that are very usable for you. And again, you know, I love tapping as much as I like alternate picking. One is not better or worse than the other. These are just techniques, and these are techniques that and things that you can apply to your playing, uh, especially some of these tapped arpeggios. They just sound really cool, and tapping probably is at an all-time high for guitar. Now, what I'm going to be using uh, today to demonstrate this is one of my signature guitars called the ET Hybrid. I really love this guitar. <clears throat> it's got a beautiful Floyd Rose. 22 frets of doom, death, mayhem, and destruction. Joey likes it. Robert likes it. And it also has a combination of 15 different sounds. We are the company that figured this one out. We developed a true hybrid. You have the Tele lipstick pickup and the Tele single coil placed exactly where a Telecaster pickup should be. And then in between, we made, we used humbuckers. Now we were able to move one forward and one backward back to accommodate the true tone of the, the single coil sounds, but these humbuckers sound amazing. And one of the settings I like, you know, people say, oh man, like there's all this stuff on this guitar, bro. Like it's like, what do you gotta do, bro? You gotta like read like a science textbook to figure it out. What is the manual? Like 8,152 pages? No, it's not. It's simple. Let me, and then I'm gonna demonstrate this and I'll show you the left. This switch controls single coil humbucker. What I like to do is put it in the center so I always have both. It is a sound you cannot get on any guitar but this. So here, now I've got, I'm gonna put on the clean sound. Now also too, these are true tele pickups. These are true humbucker pickups. And what, what this means is that humbuckers are inherently louder than single coils, especially this lipstick pickup. So I add compression to the clean sound. Now here, lipstick pickup. This is both middle position. And then you have the bridge position. So you get that really twang sound. Now, when you put it in the middle position, that activates both the single coil and the humbucker. And this is where all the sound variations happen. If I flip this switch down, all it is, see how thick that humbucker is compared to, here watch, here is the bridge position, single coil, here's humbucker. It's a huge difference. I like to put it in the middle and I'll show you why. 
because <laughs> you get the thickness of the humbucker and the brilliance and the twang of the single coils. And then what I like to do is I like to take the humbucker and put it in the bridge position and leave it. So you can actually use this position here like a toggle switch like you could use. For example, you have the telly position. You have that for the single coil in the neck position. Then when I switch, watch, I'm going to switch back and forth. This will be lipstick pickup, switch to the humbucker on the, on the bridge position. Bridge position. Neck position. And especially in a clean sound, watch. I keep it here. Uh, somebody asked the question, are these active or passive? They are passive, and there's a real good reason for this. To keep the integrity of the single coil and the humbucker, this is a true hybrid guitar. There's no guitar like this on the market, none. Uh, you know, uh, what we did is we incorporated the best of both into one guitar, and here's how I like to use the guitar. Then I'm going to show some of the examples. See, when you put this switch here and you, and you use, you keep this on the bridge position, the humbucker, and you keep the lipstick pick up on the neck position, you basically have a really simple three pickup, con you know, three sound configuration. You have neck, middle, bridge. Okay, so you can play it like that. And so that's my basic configuration. <laughs> What I like to do is I put this in the center, and I find that keeping the humbucker in the bridge position and using the toggle switch of the single coil, I get this thickness having the humbucker underneath it, but you still retain the neck position sound and the bridge position sound. Watch. I've got it in the single coil realm. All I have to do is flip this toggle switch. See, this controls the single coil. That controls the humbucker. It is so easy to use. I mean, I'm no idiot here. No, he ain't. But I'm the star of the show. Listen, it's me, Joe E. Who do you want to see, Joe E? Who do you want to be, Joe E? Not Joe B. Joe B. Jo Joe B. No, Joe E. And so the point is this. Keep it simple, stupid. K-I-S-S. -S. I'm a guitar player. I don't like to see a million knobs. I don't like to see knob, knob, blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, it's like rad. Like, oh, like I need a, a degree in rocket science to, to use this amplification. And so, no, I want to keep it simple. There are 15 different sounds on this. But what I found is I love the combination of the two. So this is how I use it keep it in the middle position. I keep the humbucker in the bridge. I'm sorry, the humbuck, yeah, in the bridge position, and I rock. See how that neck position still sounds great? Then if I want to switch, I don't use this because I've got both pickup systems on. So you get that humbucker thickness, and you get the telly single coil twang. <laughs> Joey and Robert feel good. <laughs>
Okay, now I'm going to talk about the string skipping arpeggios and tapped arpeggios. Now, a very simple way to do a tapped arpeggio is just to take the basic A minor shape and go like this. But you add what's called an extension. But that's not even close to what I want to show you as far as being advanced today. So when I do arpeggios, a lot of times when I'm playing an A minor shape like that, I will add that extension. And you have to practice it slow. And um, when I lived in Los Angeles uh, in the 80s, in the era of, you know, the Paul Gilberts coming out and the Yngwies, we used to call this like the whipper sweeper. It was the MI sweep, where you not only add the extension, but you add uh, a note before it, above it, and below it. Uh, they actually call that an appoggiatura in music. But we won't call it that. We're just going to do it simple. Watch. <laughs> So you can see Paul Gilbert back in the day, Bruce Belay, me, you know, we all did that little sweep. I think it looked cooler than it sounded. But because uh, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But see, I added extensions on all the different basic sweep arpeggio shapes. But that's not the essence of this lesson. That is like, that's the beginning of this. I want to show you something that I use a lot. When you get sequences, for example, like going. A sequence. You can do this in a tapped arpeggio form. Now I'm taking a C minor chord, I'm arpeggiating it, and I'm going to add tapping, and this is a great one. You start here, you tap, pull off, and then you have to use your fretboard hand to hit the next string. This is really a true uh, symbiotic relationship between your hands. I got to rely on Robert. Robert says nothing. He said, Joey, you better hit it. And so, watch. <laughs> Now watch what I do. See, I hit that new string. So you tap, but your fretboard hand is responsible for hitting the note on the next string. So, doodle, so it creates that doodly 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 doo, that triplet sound. Play it slow. Then you can add another part to this. You can add an extension. So it goes like this. So you can go. And so when you play it faster, awesome. And you can do the major shape like this, watch. Same thing, you go. So these are real world 
shapes that you can use. Now, I also want to show you something that's in Speed Kills. There is another way to do, there's so many variations of tapping arpeggios. And, and uh, I mean, it's unlimited. And again, I'm using this ET hybrid in the hybrid position. I've got this in the middle uh, position, so the humbuckers and the single coils are both, both working. Now, I like to play these around the 12th fret, like in the C minor shape, you're in 15th, uh, 18th fret, because it's easier for you to play. Now, I can play them all over the place, but I thought to demonstrate it, you want to play this in the easiest position possible, and it's usually between the 12th and 17th frets. Um, it's thick enough uh, width-wise on a fret, and it's thin enough. And so here is another arpeggio shape that I show in the Speed Kill series that's available on metalmethod.com. You go like this. This is an A minor shape. Now it's really A minor seventh because we incorporate the seventh scale degree in this. And you take strings five, three, and one and you go five, three, one, three, you just go up and down. And so it is technically a string skipping depth arpeggio shape. And so who cares, it sounds good. Now what I like to do is I like to use two fingers. Eddie Van Halen, when he tapped, he tapped with his first finger. Now, it is not technically the best way to do it, but it was Eddie Van Halen and he pulled it up. And so I don't like to do that and a lot of modern players don't do that either. Uh, because if you keep your picking with your thumb and your index finger ready to rock, you have your other three fingers to use tapping techniques and that's what I do. On this, I use my flip off finger and my ring finger together. So I don't just use one finger and go. Which I'm perfectly capable of doing. I use two fingers. So on that high string. See, I can get this rotation and it's fast. So you have this minor seventh shape that works great. I mean, there's so many applications. You know, if you go. It's a shape that you can play slow, and it's a shape that you can play very, 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 very fast. Now, I'm going to show you the A major shape of this. Now, it is not just an A major chord. It's an A major seventh, but it can be played over major. So instead of going like this, which is perfectly fine, or adding the extension, you can do this. really different. Then uh, again, I add not just one finger and I but I add two fingers. And you use the fifth string, the third string, the first string, and these exercises and arpeggio shapes are in the Speed Kill series. This is an A major seventh arpeggio, but it works great just over A major. Now, people are wondering uh, what this device is. A lot of guitar players that you see use fret wraps. Now, talked about this, a wrap. What is a wrap? It's a tortilla! 
you stick chicken or beef. Or if you're having a gyro, you know, a gyros, then you put whatever they make a gyro out of. But we used to goof around and call them gyros. The gyros, gyro sandwiches. Um, you do that for one reason. It cleans up tapping. See, because when you start tapping on a, on a neck of a guitar, you're going to hear, you're going to hear stuff. You're going to hear extraneous string noise. Yeah, see, see, I'm an elitist here. So I think jazz and fusion and, and, and things that are the, the higher level of music, like to think of rock and metal air, that's Neanderthal. That, that's 30,000 years ago. Ah, what about Ingvay? We don't care about Ingvay because we don't care about Michelangelo, baby. We don't care about John Petrucci because they're not jazz, and, and jazz is the highest form of music. Shut up! Shut up! Stop it! And so when you get these elitists, uh, they like to talk about uh, just things like that. I'm goofing around, of course, uh, you know, because I'm an elitist. And so what I'm, what I'm saying is this. I'm making it up in my head. But... The point is that a lot of guitar players need, and you need this to do advanced tapping, whether you're Al or James or, or anybody. Well, I invented something that's much different. This is a string damper. Now, here's exactly what this does. You lit, there's no drilling on the guitar. Chromacast, one of the sawtooth companies, markets this in, markets it and, and sells it, and it's really inexpensive. You know, you're looking under twenty dollars to get one of these. And so when you put this down, you hear that dampens the strings? Now I'm, I have a clean sound. So what this does is it stops extraneous string noise. In other words, it stops that ringing that fret wraps do. But here's the problem, at least in my humble opinion, about a fret wrap. First of all, if when I lift this up, you have, you have open strings. Can't do that with a fret wrap, especially a Floyd Rose. You can only put it here. You can never go because you've got you've got a thing, a wrap. You got something that you should put and make a burrito. Do you want to put a burrito on your guitar? Do you want to put a chimichanga on your guitar? Try the mofo. Do you want to do you want a quesadilla on your guitar? No. Do you want like I like turkey wraps, personally. I like chicken wraps, too, with the ranch dressing on there. You know, buffalo chicken. But this works better. This, like, it just deadens things. And when you're not using it, just flip it out of the way. And so this enables clarity with tapping because eventually, I don't care how good you are at tapping, without some kind of device like this, it's going to start to get sloppy. Now, we're not talking about Eddie Van Halen because Eddie, Eddie was one of the masters, but we're not. But he didn't do these kinds of arpeggios, you know. So you know what Van Halen was. You know, a lot of it was. So what you did is it's a lot, it's a different style. And so nowadays, you know, I, in fact, for a long time, I didn't even want to tap. And it's not that I couldn't do it, but I just thought I was copying Eddie Van Halen. And I loved him so much that I didn't, I felt, you know, was sacrilegious to copy the man. And so these are totally different when you... And also add diminish, like. So 
So there's so many things that you can do, but this string dampener is absolutely fantastic. It does everything, you see it. I mean, this is the stock Chromacast one. And see, uh, when I used to have them manufactured, I had them manufactured entirely in the United States. I have the patent on it. And they were really expensive. Of what Chromacast was able to do is make one for much less. I mean, you would have to pay a hundred bucks just to get one of my string dampeners. And you know, we've got it under the twenty dollar range, but but it's so good to to use this. I mean, because I can just flip it up. Just put it back. guitar rules and you see how I use the string dampener I move it back and forth I use it I don't use it that's why it works so well and you're not impeded by the rap the rap is the rap of death this is the dampener of life do you choose it's like the outlaw Josie Wales do you choose life or do you choose death I choose life and so this is life Fret wraps are death. Why? Because you eat it! It's over! And so, a wrap, I like. I like wraps. Fat thing, but I like them. And so, but this dampener works great, especially for tapping. And uh, the beauty of this, it's so easy, and there's no drilling. Um, some guitars, you have to take the truss rod cover off because it slides underneath the, uh, underneath the strings. Uh, but I absolutely love it. Okay, Randy Dive Bomb. Okay, yeah, this is the true Floyd Rose. Now, we are also making, in the future, a version of this, uh, these hybrids without locking trims because, you know, I understand that not everybody likes it. I personally love that. <laughs> How well, can you get that sound without a locking charge? And then you can bring it down to death. Somebody asked if I would tour with this guitar. Yes, in a heartbeat. I just beat the heck out of it. I tried death, mayhem, destruction, total annihilation. And it's perfectly in tune. Let's use the clean sound. It's a beautiful thing. And so, yes, I would use it. There's so many cool sounds. And I've used this in the studio. 
This hybrid tone, when you use the bridge position, you get this Eric Johnson kind of sound. It's just incredible. <laughs> Then I add an overdrive. That's no overdrive. That's with the, you know, with the tube amp. Now watch. I'm going to add overdrive. No overdrive. Overdrive. And then I, I love this middle position here because it has got both. Uh, configurations, the single coil and humbuckers, but I use the single coil toggle switch here to control it. There's something really cool about just leaving this humbucker in the in the bridge position. It just because all it does is fatten it up, but it seems like the single coils kind of dominate it a little. Bit. Even though the humbuckers are louder, you get the twang of the single coil that really stands up. See, I've got that in the neck position. Now in the bridge. gets so funky. Whoops. And then we do this. to like to do is do the Clapton version and I would go. when you're practicing exercises, there is no law that says you have to use overdrive. In fact, in my original Starlix program, which again is available on Metal Method, the whole first part, I use a clean sound. So it can be asked of me, you know, and one of the questions is, you know, okay, now, like, you can hold it in a big, really fast, bro, but like, can you play like fast with like a clean sound, dude? Yeah. <laughs> And I did this on my Starlix program. All the initial exercises before the Starlix were with a clean guitar. So, you know, and you hear. I want to remove that. So yes, it's perfectly acceptable to play with a clean sound. I do it all the time. Um, but it doesn't take away from using distortion, from playing heavy, 
playing mean. Robert's mean. See, the secret is that he's angry all the time, like in the first Avengers. Robert Smash. <laughs> And the point is this, when I play, I focus on the technique I want to work on. For example, you know, when I was talking about uh, the arpeggio shapes that are tapped, you have a minor shape. You know how clean that is? I practice it slow. See, because your fretboard hand has to hit that new note. It's the most, de it, it, this is the one arpeggio shape that I found more than almost any other that really has a dependency on both hands to coordinate together. So when you do shapes like this, because you're going do, 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 Da -do -do, da -do -do. So you tap it, but then you lead with your picking hand, then you lead with your fretboard hand, and it trades off back and forth. Because when you do things like this, like uh, the other shape that I showed you that's on Speed Kill Series. <laughs> You're really leading with your tapping hand. So you're leading with your picking hand. And so, you know, even the major thing. So it's a lot different than going. So you have to lead with both. And it's a really interesting concept. But again, when you learn how to do it, uh, it becomes second nature. Now, I want to talk about a couple things. Uh, I've talked about this uh, ET hybrid. These guitars are selling great. And one of the things that Sawtooth does more than any other guitar company on the, uh, that's out there is they make the left-handed version. So I'm left-handed. Now, I learned how to play right-handed because I'm just at the age where there were no left-handed guitars available. Uh, now, if I probably would have done it all over again, I might have done the same thing, but you can't say. You know, you can't say would have, could have, should have on this one. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm very happy, which is why I invented the double guitar, because this was my natural way to play. Speaking of the double, I've got one. I've got actually the prototype behind me here. Sorry, I'm looking at the camera going, OK. Uh, but this is the prototype. It's actually going to the Illinois Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum. But last week, I played the production model, which is absolutely fantastic. We are really close to being sold out of these. And we've tried not to just sell them to music stores to hang up on the wall. We really want people to play it. And now you're starting to see videos of people playing them. So there's a few left. If you were on the fence about getting it, I get it, you know, and you know, I read, uh, uh, you know, there's always something that somebody can say. But here's what I say I'm showing you what's in, here's my saying. In order to think outside the box, you have to know what's in the box. See, I'm showing you what's in this box. And so I'm giving you techniques that are tried and proven and established techniques. It is for you to invent your own ways and create your own style. And that's where thinking outside the box. My thinking outside the box was this. Why? I play piano. I play right-handed gu guitar. And I'm capable of playing left-handed guitar because I'm left-handed. And so this, to me, I've done all the work for you. I've come up with the perfect angles of the guitars. I've come up with the string dampeners. I've come up with the mechanism to put it together. It takes seconds. 
What I haven't come up with is your ability to find something that's uniquely you to play on that guitar. We've got a few left. We want to sell them to musicians. They're going to be gone no matter what. Okay, but we would prefer to see them. That's why we've been holding off on some stores. Um, they would have been gone already if we would have sold, like, you know, one music store, you know, wanted eight of these. And we don't want that because we want to sell them directly to the people who are going to play it. And, and not just, you know, you know, a lot of places want them just to hang up because it looks really cool on the wall. We want to see people play it. Now, um, so talking about that, also, Sawtooth Guitars Chromacast, where you can get this string dampener. The string dampener works fantastically. It's better than a fret wrap. It, it is. You know, a lot of times people don't understand. They think it's a capo. It isn't a capo. I invented this because I needed the proverbial third hand for my double. Why do you think when I play the double, it's so seamless? Because this blocks the extra noise like I'd have a third hand to palm mute the strings and block them. That's what this does. But it works equally as good. In the studio, I use this all the time. I'm on Shrapnel Records, the Mike Varney era, with Paul Gilbert, even John Five, Ingve, Marty Friedman, myself, Greg Howe, Vinnie Moore. Uh, all the guitar players, when they were in the studio, used some kind of device to block the extra noise. It adds that extra level of cleanness that's just, you know, it's immaculate, which means clean. It's just so, you know, it, it's just unbelievable. And that's what this device does. Uh, but also Sawtooth and Chromacast, the two companies uh, that are part of one, have the GoDPS Music Live app. This app is awesome. It is free. And we're not talking about free for three months and you have to pay. Free, like as in F-R-E-E, -E, free. And you can see content like me playing with Vinnie Apice and Udi Sarzo and Melody from Liliac, the all-star band, as I like to call them. Uh, you can see the MAB band. You can see lessons. There's so many really cool features about this app. You get discounts on gear. Uh, it's incredible. I would download it. And also, too, I have a YouTube channel, Michelangelo Badio, and uh, official. And uh, there are, it's just a lot of content on there, a lot of different playthroughs and things that you can't find anywhere else. And, and also, I'd like to talk a little bit about Metal Method, which I do every week. I've worked with Doug Marks, the owner of Metal Method, the founder, for many, many years. I've never switched companies from the time I did Speed Kills, but we did iconic programs. And one of the things that at least signified with Metal Method to me, sorry, I just hit my microphone. One of the things that made Metal Method stand out to me is even in Speed Kills, we had a three camera shoot. We used the highest technology and the highest camera quality and film quality, even though you know it was film back in the day, that was possible for the era. And that's why it still holds up. It's like watching a great old movie that was filmed right the first time. These, the production of Metal Method is second to none. The production's incredible. The features that you get on there, just like Sawtooth, you get so many features for an incredible amount of money on the guitars. Well, Metal Method is similar in that you get a lot of features that are on the programs that are included. You know, an animated tab. Um, you know, me playing it slow, me playing it fast. And it's not MIDI slow. That was me playing it. We did it for real. <laughs> Why? Because we can. And I mean, three camera shoots, the highest quality video, the highest quality audio. We didn't spare anything. And that's why the programs still hold up. My programs and, and these tapped arpeggios are available at Metal Method, metalmethod.com. Doug Marks has great programs too. He even came out with a, a, a speed and accuracy program that's a little bit different take on what I do. But it is great. I mean, he is a fantastic teacher, and I can't recommend it enough. So let's conclude this. You've got tapped arpeggios of doom, mayhem, destruction. They rule. You practice it slow. You get down the method. You practice it. You feel how both hands work together. Two, the ET hybrid series. This is the ET. We have an ES that is uh, 
a strat, so it's got three humbuckers, I'm sorry, two humbuckers and three single coils. There's over 20 sounds on this. There are 15 unique sounds, and I'm going to be releasing a playthrough very soon showing you all the different sounds based in the context of a song. Uh, these guitars are incredible. Look at the spalted maple body. I mean, look at this up close. Just awesome. I mean, it just looks so killer. It's just beautiful. And, and, uh, and I mean, the guitar, it's exquisitely made. It plays fantastic. It's a C and D shaped styled neck. Also, these are medium jumbo frets. And so if you're a, a purist with shred and you only like jumbo frets, you're gonna really like those because these are medium jumbos. They feel great and the intonation is better on these because you don't have to push down as far to hit a note. If you're a purist and you don't like the big jumbo frets, you're gonna like this as well because it's a little thinner than a jumbo. It's medium and so we really bridge the gap between the two with Sawtooth, they're fantastic. But anyway, I would like to say this. On behalf of Sawtooth Guitars, Chromacast, Go DPS Music Live, Joey, that's Robert, and myself, I'm Michelangelo Badio, see ya.